podcast. The Final Frontier. These are the voyages of the Daily Solutions. Its daily mission, to explore strange new float tank questions, to seek out some sort of acceptable answer that makes it sound like they know what they're talking about, to boldly go where no podcast has gone before. All right, hey, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> this, this is, is Celia Ashgun over here. In <laughs> old Serious Graham. Serious Graham, yes, that's right. <laughs> All right, so we have a question today. And it is, is there any sound science showing, I assume sound they mean science. like like science that is sound, yeah, not like sound like bunk science. auditory-based science. <laughs> is there any sound science showing the brain waves slowing down into the theta state? And they didn't say in a float tank, but I'm just going to assume that that was the end of the question. Because <laughs> definitely otherwise, yeah, they, yeah. there's... there's it is a brainwave yeah. state. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So this is this is an interesting one because this idea of like the theta state and theta brain waves has been around for a long time. People have their float Millennia. centers named yeah. after it. Um, there's you know various things in books. There's all sorts of clever float names, including theta, uh, that go back years and years and years. And as far as I know, the first actual like research to really show you know theta brain waves happening in a float tank didn't happen until 2016. <laughs> yeah, in in uh, a more serious way, I guess, that we can yeah. get behind and say, like, okay, yeah, it's it, we're pretty sure that these yeah. are generated as an effect of being in there. And part of the problem is is just technology. Uh, they're like EEG headsets. And salt water. And, and salt and water. And the combination, yeah, I guess, is really... <laughs> and any water. Like, actually, just waterproof EEG mm-hmm. sensors are not a very common thing. I mean, when we first opened, I had this, like, I was like, we should measure people's EEG brain waves. <laughs> and they started, like, trying to find a waterproof EEG sensor. And, like, they're not really... They didn't really exist. And uh, then you add in salt water, which is, you know, conductive and all that sort of stuff and, and destroys everything. And now you have, like, a way, way bigger issue. So I think there's been some stuff where people were, were taking EEG measurements before and after people float. But in terms of actually getting data while people are in a float tank, it's only very recently that we even have the ability, technology-wise, to, to do that. And as far as I know, the Tom Fine back in the day attempted it uh like in the 80s where yeah, like he, during his john like with john turner kind yeah. of studies um and i'm pretty sure he had had like he had like a single eeg probe that he like stuck to people's foreheads and pretty much half the time it would break because of the salt water uh, and the other like as a result i think his data was just kind of so hit or miss that i i don't even know if he ever really published it or, or put it out in any kind of formal way yeah and if he does we've definitely had conversations where it doesn't seem like he feels like that was yeah a, a, a absolute conclusion of the uh-huh. work he was doing or or anything like that but so. i think that's where he did see some like theta brain waves and that's kind of part of what fueled a lot of people like saying that as a as a fact quote unquote fact for many years yeah i think like that in combination with the like it just making sense <laughs> is honestly how it got perpetuated for a long time uh-huh. you know and as, as theta brain waves come out as that kind of between waking and sleeping meditative state that you hit when you're meditating and that feeling familiar in the float tank like i think there's kind of a lot of anecdotal stories that also went into this just spreading but outside of the tom fine research there's not really even anything that i'm super aware of out there that yeah. was showing that that kind of continued theta state or again uh-huh. it had proven it before and and what we're talking about here is the 2016 ricardo gil de costa talk i think probably does the best job of talking about the new sensors that he designed and is using in justin feinstein's lab and that's where you got like as an audience member you actually got to see it up on the screen of yeah uh the the full like during float uh, brain wave, uh, waves, brain waves. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. But laid out over time, like the 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 timeline of how that goes and where um, they're dipping down into and the frequencies, yeah. which is really cool. So so some context. Ricardo Gildacosta runs a company called Neuroverse, and he makes these wireless EEG, wireless waterproof EEG sensors that are these kind of like. Uh, like sticker things that you put on your forehead that connect to this little device that is able to take EEG readings and, and send them out wirelessly. And uh, Justin Feinstein got got to work with him to try to use those in the float tank because he was also having much trouble trying to get EEG sensors that just weren't being destroyed because of the salt water. 
and and they turned out to be able to work and hold up against against the salt. And so that was the first time that they were able to actually kind of do the do that data, like find actual kind of live data of people's EEG readings in a, in a kind of more robust way over the course of, of someone actually being in a float tank. And Ricardo came out to the 2016 float conference to kind of present the the data they had found. And none of this is, as far as I know, been published. I think they're working on on getting this stuff yeah. published currently, but this hasn't been like published or peer reviewed or, or kind of anything like that uh, to, to the point where... You, you know, you would find this information in some sort of medical journal, but this this was just them kind of presenting their findings. And what they can do with these wireless EEG sensors is, uh, you know, they're just getting live readouts for the entire duration, like the 60 or 90 minutes of someone being in a float tank. And on stage, he like just played it, you know, in, in fast time. And you can just watch like these various colors and things like that change. And I think there's also a lot of like analysis they have to do and and what they're seeing is based on kind of presumptions and there's a lot of like asterisks and caveats that come with with them not wanting to kind of overstep what they're what they're saying or what their what uh kind of results we should be reading into into the data but it did seem at least from my memory seemed to show that the theta brain waves were like probably i think around like the 45 minute mark ish yep. on average yeah, like starting sure. to pop up in people and and also like how i alpha waves also seem to be generated in a higher quantity and, and i remember i remember sitting in the audience being like oh that's such good news for I all know, the folks that have theta in their name <laughs> like it would have been really embarrassing if we had assumed that for right. all these decades and we even have like a little music label called theta state records <laughs> so i'm just like sitting there like holding my collar like please like <laughs> 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 so yeah, it was it was definitely good news. And, and you should listen. Uh, you should totally go to the Float Conference yeah. website to the videos section because we don't know what um, we're talking about. Like, <laughs> bar- we barely know what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't you shouldn't be listening to us as the <laughs> the source of authority on this. Um, but yeah, the the videos section of the Float Conference website has uh, pretty much all of our past videos throughout all of the years of the Float Conference in 2016. Ricardo Gilda Costa presentation is is what we're talking about, and you yep. can go watch the entire thing for yourself. It's yep. like a half an hour, forty five minutes, or somewhere in that range. So, and, yeah, I guess the answer is like closer to yes now than than it's ever been. Yep, or or since two thousand sixteen, I guess. Yeah, well, probably closer now, and we just don't know about it <laughs> as well yet. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully soon. We try to get researchers to call us like every week with check ins about where they're <laughs> at, and so far, no takers. <laughs> Um, and and hopefully, at the, I think hopefully at some point they'll actually be able to get that data in a more formalized form and and put it out, which would be super cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And again, uh, add some credibility to us and make people <laughs> not feel silly for launching into naming their companies. <laughs> um, good. Well, if you have any other uh, scientific questions, um, again, feel free to to reach out to us, and we'll let you know what we know, and probably direct you to experts who can better answer things. Yeah, just go down to floattanksolutions.com slash podcast. Say hello. (laughs) Cheers, everyone. Right.